As you guessed it, MJZ Comics back with our favorite Star Wars collection. Let's get it going. Let's start the show. As you saw in the intro of today's video, we are going to do the favorite Star Wars in our MJZ collection. Before we get started, make sure you give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. Now, please don't comment to us. These are not the best Star Wars books. I know they're not the best Star Wars books out there. These are the best, or I should say, our favorite Star Wars comic books in the MJZ collection. Again, any questions on these books, please comment and let's get it started. The first book here is Star Wars The Old Republic number two, The Lost Sons. Beautiful, beautiful cover. And it is it is from the video games Old Republic and it's Darth Marr. I mean, just a really cool character. If you've played the video game, he's just a really compelling Sith. Kind of has some good to him. And um, I just love that cover. And he's one of the, I think he's one of the coolest looking Sith Lords. It's a beautiful cover. Uh, next couple books, Kanan the Last, Padawan number one. Really cool book. Multiple key appearances from the show Rebels. Now, this is the first cameo of Sabine, Ezra, and Hera, and the first full appearance of Kanan Jarrus. And then to go with it, Star Wars Kanan number six. First full appearance of Sabine Wren, Ezra Bridger. Harris and Dula. So these kind of go together. Great books if you are a big fan of the Rebels Star Wars TV show. And as you know, a lot of these characters from this are now rumored to be coming to the Star Wars shows on Disney+. Plus. Um, there's a lot of rumor that Sabine Wren will be showing up, and there's a lot of rumors that Ezra will be showing up, either in the Ahsoka series or the Mandalorian. So great books. Next book in the series, one of my all-time favorite Star Wars characters, Star Killer Galen Merrick, Vader's Secret Apprentice. A lot of you remember this is the character from Star Wars: The Force Unleashed. Just a really cool character. He is voiced by the same guy that voices the cartoon character Darth Maul, Sam Witwer, and it, it, it's actually a model of Sam Witwer in the game. I mean, it looks just like him. So if you're not familiar with the video game, there are novels that go over this. Just an amazing storyline. If you haven't read it, it's probably one of the, my favorite storylines in Star Wars. I mean, the whole Star Killer thing, Vader's secret apprentice when he was with Palpatine, and his powers actually grew to exceed Vader's and the Emperor's, and he came to kind of like be a martyr for the rebellion. And this is a trade paperback, by the way. It's not a comic book. Next book here is Star Wars number 43, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, first appearance of Lando Calrissian. So this is one of those older Star Wars books. Obviously, iconic classic character. He's on the cover, first appearance. Great for you Star Wars fans out there. Yep, classic character in Star Wars, Lando Calrissian. Here we have Star Wars The Clone Wars from Free Comic Book Day, an incredible all-black cover with Savajo Press, who was, if you don't not familiar with the character, a brother of Darth Maul. In the storyline, Count Dooku goes to the Night Sisters and asks them for a recruit that he's trying to train as his secret apprentice uh, while Dooku is with the Emperor. So unbeknownst to the Emperor, Count Dooku, make a long story short, Savajo Press wins the battle on the planet of the Night Sisters amongst the other warriors. He takes him, he is force sensitive, trains him in the ways of the dark side. Eventually Maul comes across him and, and brings him to him, breaks him away from Dooku and the two join forces, but I don't want to give the whole story away. Again, that's in, in Star Wars, the Clone Wars animated series, Savage Press first appearance. Next book from Dark Horse Comics, Star Wars, Jango Fett number one. It's kind of a thicker square bound book. First appearance of Jango Fett who Awesome character in the Star Wars universe. Great cover. So, you know, this is one of those books that you just have to have in your collection if you're a Star Wars fan. Yep. And when you think about it, what a lot of people don't realize Jango Fett is the father of the clones. I mean, he's where all the clones came from. Those you Rex fans, all those guys originated from Jango Fett. Dark Horse. Really hard to find these books in high grade, too. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the Dark Horse Star Wars stuff. And keeping in line with the Star Wars shows, we already know... Uh, that Grand Admiral Thrawn is going to be the bad guy in the Ahsoka series, and this is his first appearance. 
This book here is Star Wars Heir to the Empire, number one of six. It has Luke Skywalker on the cover. You can see Thrawn in the background. Now this is not, I believe this book is not canon, even though Thrawn is canon because he's been in Rebels cartoon and he's going to be live action coming up. This comic book was from the novels Heir to the Empire, which actually was one of the one of the original Star Wars novels that came out. It was the story to follow what happened after Return of the Jedi. And Thrawn was the bad guy uh, in these storylines. So it is the first comic book appearance of Thrawn, even though this story, I believe, is considered Legends. But the one that we're seeing in Rebels and in the Ahsoka series coming out, it follows a little bit different storyline than the Thrawn in this comic book, but this is considered his first comic book appearance, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Next book is Star Wars Clone Wars Adventures number one. This was a free comic book day book, so they do this once a year and they give out a bunch of books. First appearance of General Grievous and the first cover appearance of Barriss Offee, one of the Jedi seen there. So this book might look familiar to you because this was actually it's a cover of the original Clone Wars animation cartoon. So really, really unique book. Yep. Hard to find in high grade. Another Dark Horse favorite. This next book here has got to be one of my favorite covers. Um, and I'm saying about this about a lot of the characters here, but one of my all-time favorite Star Wars characters. I really hope they bring his story to light. Um, just an amazing story. This is Star Wars 10 from 1999, labeled The Outlander. And this is the first appearance of A. Sherrod Het. And he's right on the cover there with his red lightsaber. I mean, the colors on this 9.8 are amazing. So it's the first appearance of A. Sherrod Het. And not to make a long, long storyline here, but A. Sherrod Het was an unsatisfied Jedi, was unhappy with the Jedi Order. He survived Order 66 and ended up turning to the dark side, and he became a Sith on the planet of Tatooine and hiding. So yeah, he was a Jedi. There's a lot of storyline to him. More online, there's some books about him. Uh, this comic line follows his storyline. Um, just a tragic story. His family dies. He ends up turning his backs on the Jedi Order, uh, finds more powers in the dark side, starts wielding a red lightsaber. He actually, uh, in the comics, he ends up in a battle with Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan defeats him in a hard-fought battle, but spares his life and makes him, tells him that he never, you know, I'll spare your life, but you need to flee and never come back kind of thing. Um, a. Sherrod Het leaves in disgust that he lost to Obi-Wan, and what happens is he becomes Darth Krayt. Now, if you follow these Star Wars comics, if you go into Legacy, the Legacy line, Darth Krayt is the the head of the whole Sith Empire. He's the emperor, emperor at that point. Has a lot of potential in the Star Wars universe. Another great, great storyline. Really compelling character. Uh, how he goes from good to dark, runs the Sith Empire post uh, Return of the Jedi, and takes on the name Darth Krayt. So first appearance of A. Sherrod Head. Next book we have is Star Wars 17, Dark Horse Comics. This is the first appearance of Quinlan Voss, who was mentioned in the Obi-Wan show. I believe there was some writing on one of the secret hideouts, and yep. it was from Quinlan Voss. Yes. And Quinlan Voss has a, another great storyline. Um, one of my favorite Jedis that's not really in the movies. You know, I think maybe they show him, I think they show him once in one of the, I can't remember now, but anyway, his storyline is just, it's great, intense. He's actually in the animated cart in the Clone Wars cartoons quite a bit. And what happens is they send him as a spy to take out Count Dooku. So he actually has to start learning the dark side and join forces with Dooku um, in the long run. So yeah, in the in the storyline, in the cartoons, in the comics, he ends up uh, kind of becoming an apprentice to Count Dooku and Asajj Ventress, who is also in the animated. Clone Wars, really compelling also uh, Sith Apprentice. They kind of have a relationship. They end up falling in love, which he ends up dying to save Quinlan Voss um, and his journey from Jedi to the dark side, back to the light. Just a really cool character, kind of a rogue Jedi, I would call him. But he's, he's a cool storyline. If you're looking for intriguing, if you're into Star Wars and you're looking for intriguing stuff, a lot of the stuff we're mentioning today 
is some really cool stuff. I mean, the Quinlan Voss, the A. Sherrod Het, the Star Killer, Galen Merrick storylines, they're all amazing Star Wars stories that just have not been brought into the, you know, Star Wars um, canon. Next book, since we just mentioned Quinlan Voss and mentioned his love interest, Asajj Ventress, this is her first appearance in comic books. She's one of my, I really like her, like her storyline. Um, she initially starts off as a Sith assassin for Count Dooku, wields two lightsabers, uh, really cool character in the Clone Wars animated series. And like we said, she ends up teaming up with Quinlan Voss. They fall in love and she ends up giving her life to save uh, Quinlan. But cool storyline. I'm sure a lot of you know who she is. But first appearance of Saj Ventress. And this title of this comic book is Star Wars Jedi Mace Windu number one. Next book is Star Wars The Clone Wars number eight. Another Dark Horse book. This is the first appearance of clone commander wolf well, if you watched our comic book room video we had a hot toys figure of him so really awesome clone trooper yeah we're, I, I love the clone troopers especially the ones that get named in the stories and the cartoons and commander wolf was a really cool commander in the clones he guided the wolf pack the air they were the airborne uh clones and just a cool comic book from the early Clone War Dark Wars. Next book we have here is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace number three. And just an amazing cover. And this is the first cover appearance of Darth Maul. Um, I don't think it's considered the first comic appearance. There, I've seen different things on it where maybe this is the first full appearance of Darth Maul in comics. But anyway, love the cover. There's a, two different covers of this one. I like this better with the red just as he's a Sith Lord with the red in the background. Beautiful cover. First cover appearance of Darth Maul. We got an old Star Wars book here. Star Wars 42 from 1980. First comic book appearance of Boba Fett along with some other fan favorite bounty hunters. So just a classic, iconic cover and a great book. Yeah. Boba Fett, need we say more? I mean, one of the favorites. Also has Bosk and Dengar on the cover. Awesome bounty hunter cover. It's Boba Fett. Next book we have here is Star Wars The Clone Wars number one. This is an amazing book from Dark Horse Comics, and this is the special edition cover. We'll try to put the original cover up here too, but there was only a thousand copies of this book made. Only a thousand. This one, I bought this originally when it came out, being a big Clone Wars fan. I bought it raw, sent it to CGC, came back a 9.6, extremely happy with this. This is a pricey book because of the variant status and to top this off, this is the first appearance of Captain Rex and Ahsoka. Two huge characters in the Star Wars lore, Star Wars canon, Star Wars legend. I mean, when you think about Rex and Ahsoka, two huge characters. Ahsoka now has her own live action. Uh, maybe we'll see Rex live action at some point, but he was one of the mainstays in the Clone Wars animated series. It's their first appearances. It's the rare variant cover. It has Ahsoka on the cover with Anakin. Just a really, really amazing comic book. The next set here we're going to bring out is another um, Legends favorite of mine, and that being Darth Talon. This book here is her first cover appearance. This is Star Wars Legacy number zero. So this, the Star Wars Legacy line is where Darth Crate that we talked about earlier leads off in, in his empire. But this is a number zero, so this was like a preview to the whole storyline. And, and Darth Talon was one of his main Sith um, that he would send out to rid the Jedi. So she was a, a furious lightsaber warrior, tough as nails, and she was feared by many of the Jedi at the time. And then this next book, Star Wars Legacy number 2, this is the first appearance of Darth Talon in comic books. Star Wars Legacy number two. She's not on the cover of this one, unfortunately, but two cool books, one of my favorites in the Legends storyline. The next book we have here is really a rare find. This is a trade paperback. It's called Star Wars Clone Wars Shipyards of Doom. And the significance of this is it's the, I believe that this is considered the second full appearance of Ahsoka. So we showed you the first appearance. This is the second appearance. It's really rare to find one of these graded this high. I mean, it's fine. It's hard to find this 
book graded at all by CGC, but one in a 9.6. I've never seen a 9.8 for sale. I'm not saying there isn't some out there, but just a really cool book. The next book we have here has become a fan favorite. She has not been in any of the movies or anything or animated, but her comic book story has just taken off. It's the first appearance of Dr. Afra, Darth Vader 3. We have a CGC 9.8 here. Um, I think they have a lot of plans for Dr. Afra, and I would bet she's going to come to some type of live action show. Another cool storyline, she's like an archaeologist that Vader, uh, for some reason, has a liking towards her, and he uses her for a lot of missions to hunt down artifacts, different things for him. So first appearance, Dr. Afra. All right, next books we have here kind of go together. First one is Star Wars Tales 23. This is the first comic book appearance of Darth Revan and Darth Malak in cameo. Remember those two characters, iconic from the Knights of the Old Republic video game? We're praying, hoping that we see these in a live action property of some sort, whether it's a movie or TV show. Yep. And another note, uh, this is also considered the first appearance of Bastilla Shan, who, as you know, becomes Darth Revan's wife. I mean, of all this stuff that we've gone over, if I could pick and only could choose one storyline to have, I would definitely have the Knights of the Old Republic story on the big screen or in a television show uh, on Disney Plus that just focused on the whole Revan Malik story. I mean, incredible, incredible storyline. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's, it's in the comics here, but I don't know that they ever made a novel following the game. I mean, the game, if you play the game, you know the storyline, what happens. A lot of you probably know the storyline, but just really cool. So again, Darth Revan, Darth Malak, Bastilla Shan's cameo. Now the next book here is more of the, is worth more. It's, I guess it's the money book when you're in regards to Darth Revan. Yeah, Star Wars Knights of the Republic number nine, first full appearance of Darth Revan. You know, neither of them are on the cover, unfortunately, but I think really if you're collecting for this character, you got to get both books. Yeah, I, I find it strange. I mean, this one is cool because the title is Knights of the Old Republic, kind of like the game. But I that's not, I believe, if correct me if I'm wrong, but that is not him on the cover. And it's considered the first full appearance of Revan. And this one, when you go searching at a 9.8 grade, this one here, the first full Revan, is worth much more than this book, which I find funny because when you look at this book, and I don't know if it just has to do with the, the title and it's kind of like a lamer cover, Star Wars Tales, nobody from the storylines on the cover, but I mean, this has a triple threat. This is the first Revan, Malik, and Bastilla. Even though it's cameos, you would think that this book would be more valuable, and maybe that'll happen at some point once, if the story ever gets introduced, where people start realizing this is a triple threat where this is just Revan. This one may become the more valuable book. But if you're a big Darth Revan fan in a Knights of the Old Republic, Malik, Bastilla, um, these are the two books for the collector. Yeah, it's a good point because this certainly seems to be the bigger book. It makes no sense why this one isn't twice as valuable as this book here. Yeah. So kind of unusual. We checked out our previous video with our Transformers collection room with our sideshow statues. We have the XM pair of Darth Revan and Darth Malik, which is just incredible. So you get a chance to check that out. Yep. Great video. Again, thank you for your support. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe, like, and comment on the video. MJZ out.